Thank you all uh, for coming tonight. Um, my name's James Jones. Uh, we're very lucky to be joined by the director of the film you've just watched, Julien Elly. Uh, it's a film I've heard a lot about. It's been touring around festivals around the world. It's got a lot of criti critical acclaim. It's won lots of awards. Um, so I was very happy to get a chance to see it. I've got dozens of questions for you, Julien, but I'm going to limit myself to a couple uh, and then throw it open uh, to you guys. I'm going to start with a very bland question, which is, what, what's your background? I know you had a bit of a gap before making this film, and, and what was it about this subject that turned out to be quite epic in its scope? What was it that kind of drew you out of your kind of hiatus in filmmaking? What was it that drew you to making this film? Um, well, as I said in the beginning, uh, I, I really had this idea about 20 years ago when I, I was reading about those, those, those uh, killings of women in northern Mexico. And as everybody, I was shocked about it. But as a filmmaker, I wanted to dig uh, behind those stories of terror to understand what was happening. Um, and I think that, that 20 years ago, we knew nothing about what was happening. But I think today, we don't know. <laughs> we know. We know really little about what's what's really happening or what happened in Suave Juarez and what is still happening because as those ladies says uh, the killing are still uh, continuing every day in in uh, Chihuahua state so so everything start with this and and uh, in those years I knew very little Mexico so I thought I was not the right person to do a film about this because it's you don't you don't put yourself in those topics uh, when you just because you're interested by it, right? Uh, is it okay? Yeah. You hear me? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, but I, I I became really interested and, and curious about the country, and and, and uh, in the last ten fifteen years I visited uh, often Mexico, and and I saw the transformation of the country in something really uh, dark and and really sad. Um, so I start thinking back uh, again to do something about what was happening in the country. Um, and I think the everything, I mean, the main idea was five years ago, um, I read the book of Sergio Gonzalez Rodriguez, which is the opening quote of the film. Um, Sergio died a few years ago, uh, um, but he was a really great journalist and, and author. Who, who he wrote probably the, the first main investigation about the killing of women in Mexico. So uh, you should read this book. It's called Bones in the Desert. It's a, a book like this. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's incredible, the, the amount of testimony that he has in his book. I was struck by this, but also the way it was written. Uh, he, he I think it's the, for me, it was a perfect mix of a journalist uh, an investigation from a journalist mixed with with a great uh, it's almost uh, you can read this book almost as a novel uh, he has really a great sense of writing and and this is the kind of films that I, I wanted to do also uh, approaching that kind of use all the cinematic ways to to tell a story but with an important investigation so that that struck me and I, I, I met with Sergio and uh, and I I wanted to adapt his his book into a film, and he was the first person who told me uh, you should now open to it's it's important still to talk about what's happening with women in Mexico, but you should also talk about uh, those women that were killed in other parts of Mexico, but also the violence against migrants, about students, against uh, young people, a journalist, of course, and and he told me uh, it's really dangerous, <laughs> uh, but you must do it. So I just. I just dig into it and yeah. Um, and in terms of the, the style and the form of the film, it's kind of very distinctive, uh, you know, both in terms of the style, in terms of black and white, four by three, um, you know, a very composed style uh, in some of, the, some of the scenes. And also in terms of the story itself, kind of not a linear progressive story following one story, one location, but kind of expanding into something kind of epic. Mm -hmm. um, what, what was your thinking behind each of those decisions in, in, in terms of making the film? And was it always conceived of as this kind of 
grand scope? Yeah, it w it was the idea um, was uh, I, I mean since the beginning I wanted to do like I wanted to share the fear of people living in Mexico. So so I didn't want to do like a normal or a usual documentaries. I, I really wanted to do a film. I, I wanted to tell a story and that's what drive me most in in doing documentaries. Um and the choice of black and white was I think it was at, at really first my first idea is when I start write the project a few years ago I, 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 I think I, I, I was already seeing the movie in black and white um, there's many reasons to it um, I think first I just I love shooting in black and whites I think we don't do enough films in black and white but um, then I just I just realized that sh making uh, shooting in Mexico can be uh, there, there's a trap for foreigners because it's really easy to do nice images because of the colors because of the I mean everything is beautiful in Mexico of course uh, despite <laughs> the violence but at first sight it's it's a really beautiful country so by t taking off the colors uh, it, 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 it was driven me more into what I, I wanted to share that I mean the fear and and those feelings of, of terror that people live uh, experience every day um, so that, that that was the main reason same for the, that format that square format uh, for three um, yeah, sorry, so that so most films would be kind of wider screen so it was you probably noticed four by three just means it was like an old yeah it's, it's the format of our old uh, television and now uh, everything is like this and and I think it's a shame because I think every film depend on what you d you do what kind of film what kind of story you're going to tell I is going to call you a different aspect ratio you know uh, if you do a western movie of course you will need that <laughs> large landscape but it's not any movie that that will need this and 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 i i wanted again to to share that fear so to have a tight frame um i think was more powerful because i i didn't want to lost myself or the viewers into the landscape and just more be focused on 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 near the characters that's why we were uh shooting them from behind sometimes uh near the uh the back of the head um but by the way that idea of shooting the people that way um it it came when my first meeting with Sergio Gonzalez Rodriguez in Mexico and Sergio Gonzalez Rodriguez, it's really important to say that um, as a journalist, because of his investigation, he was he was uh, kidnapped twice and uh, beaten almost to death, and led almost dead in Mexico one day, and he was uh, in hospital for six months, uh, trying to recover from his injuries. Um, so and uh, he was certain when I met him, he told me that that he knew that he was he was. Uh, his phone was tapped, that he was followed by people still, and, and people who want, uh, was treating him just that, so he will stop his in his work and investigation. And and when I left him after our meeting in that in that cafe in, in Mexico City, I saw him walking in the streets, and and he was looking behind him like to to make sure that nobody w was following him. And I ha at that point, I had really the idea of uh, of shooting the people from the back and because this is I wanted to express this in the movie right so should we open it up to questions from the one there uh, th thank you very much I think it's uh, it says it all that so many people are still here on a rather wet and awkward transport night um, what on earth can um, the democratic Western countries uh, do to help. Um, I can't help have the feeling that the European countries could could do more, um, and perhaps a more nuanced and less blunderbuss law enforcement assistance approach, which the US tends to take. And are there any grounds for optimism? For optimism, I, uh, it's really it's really hard to say. I, I, I'm not Mexican. I, I'm not neither a journalist, uh, and I rather prefer uh, let Mexican people answer about this. Uh, I don't know if there's some here tonight that can answer, but what what my Mexican uh, friends are telling me is that it will need much more than a new president 
to bring hope. Uh, some people told me we will need a generation, 25 years. So we are far from uh, changing the, the situation. Uh, you, you I didn't get well your first question. It was about like what what can uh, Europe can do or other countries. I mean, I, I think I don't like in my movies to uh, to say what people have to think, you know. <laughs> but I, I think it's I hope it's clear that that what is going on in Mexico has to do a lot with with the global economy. You know, I think it's obvious. Um, I didn't want to put it too clear because I don't. I prefer people just ask themselves question after and um, and and of course um, the violence in Mexico. I, I I think it's how I see Mexico. For me, it's um, it's probably as someone say in the film, it's like uh, it or it was or it is a laboratory of violence uh, where they experience some some people <laughs> experience some 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 ways of violence. Um, and I think it is the worst that can that our societies, uh, modern societies, can produce uh, in terms of uh, a state without law, where uh, where minorities are, are wi the weakest of the, the the population, as women and young people uh, are are first targeted. So so um, um, I think it's it. This film is really unique to Mexico, but I think it. If we let things going on, it we can see, it, I, or, or, or unfortunately, uh, James is a filmmaker himself. We can, we can do film about this in other places in the world. Hi, thank you very much for the film. Um, the impression I got, both from news outside and from this, is that it's spreading. It's not in any way slowing down in Mexico. Um, the elements behind it, the symbiosis behind it, is that, do you have the impression that that's driving northwards, it's jumping across the fence to the U.S. and, and uh, potentially would affect even Canada? Um, no, I don't, I, don't, I don't think so. I, uh, I think, uh, I think uh, the economy is in Canada and the United States uh, is it's too strong to, uh, for now. Uh, so there, I think we are far from this, uh, but again, it can happen in many countries, and this is very frightening because those situation. I mean, it's, it's um, you see. I mean, like when I, I I first wanted to talk about the the killings of women in Suar Juarez, and as you you saw in the movie or you knew before, uh, those killings had to do also with the economy in Suar Juarez and and what they produce for America and for Europe. Um, and, and then I wanted also to talk about those killings of women in Nicatepec and that you heard about in the second chapters. Um, and some people told me, but you cannot mix those things because they're completely different. It's different context. I, it is different context, but for sure um, the victims are always the same. This is They, they are the same. And, and that's what I, I try to portray in the film is that despite those different contexts, and maybe the killers are different, but the victims are the same. It's, it's, you can, we can take also, uh, for example, the, the case of um, um, the young kids uh, who suffered um, the political repression in, in uh, 68, uh, just before the Olympics, and uh, we talk a bit in the movies. And when, when you look at the face of those victims and the faces of the young kids who disappeared for five years ago in Ayotzinapa, they are the same kids. So of course the contexts are, are completely different, but the thing is that it's like the story is repeating again and again and again because they are targeting always the same people. My name is Susie Bascon. I work for a charity called Peace Brigades International that provides protection to human rights defenders and activists at risk. And we have a presence in Mexico. I could recognize some of the human rights defenders in the film. Um, I thought two questions. One is, what are, the, what are your plans in terms of showing the film in Mexico? Is this a possibility? And if that is the case, um, are there any risks for, obviously, the activists um, that are, are being featured in the film? Um, 
And then my second question is about how did you go about choosing the, the specific characters that end up making part of your film? I guess there are, in our experience, thousands or more human rights activists yeah. in the country, so uh, it's a really difficult task to, to go for the ones that can tell the story. Thanks very much. Yeah, the truth is that uh, we shot probably 130 hours of uh, interviews and films and really we had the materials to do to movie like this for sure. Um, but how we choose them, um, the truth is that apart a few, most of them, it's since the beginning they were on my script and, and, and we stick with them. I heard about them uh, thanks to um, investigation of journalists in Mexico who helped me a lot. I'm always saying that I, I hone everything to journalists in Mexico. Again, I, I'm not a journalist myself, and I'm not pretending at all to do a journalist work, but, but I hone everything to those people who risk their life every day. And, 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 and thanks to them, I mean, I, I found all those people because by reading stories, then I was calling them, get in touch with their journalists, getting friends with them, because of course they, they will not give you their contact like this, but, and, and, um, it's it's just I I I went visiting most of those people, uh, each of the characters in the film, years before uh, I met them. We established uh, trust. Well, I tried to, and we bec we became friends. And at that point, you know, this it's become obvious that they're going to be in the film. Um, the sad thing again is that there's many really uh, incredible interviews or testimony that we have uh, uh, that are not in the film. I like to say so that, that, that some of the best interviews, I think, or the most powerful uh, testimony are not in the film for just like it's editing reason. You know, you, you try to make your movie and sometimes, uh, um, and by the way, if you're interested uh, to see some of them, uh, since last week we are uh, putting on the web each week a new sequence uh, on release uh, scene from the film because they were really so strong uh, testimony that, that, that uh, it was it was a torture to took them away from the film so at least I wanted to put it in the film so uh, you can check in the website of the film yeah. for now I think there's two available and next week there will be a third one um, your first question well yes about Mexico uh, the truth is that I, I'm just coming back from Mexico now um, and, and first uh, during the course of the that this year uh, we presented during during three different festivals, the film about 30 times in different parts of Mexico. Not just in the capital, but in many places. Uh, uh, we done some screening with uh, more than a thousand people in big theaters um, in Mexico City and in Jalapa, so that you, you, you heard about in the film, the capital of uh, Veracruz State. Um, and and, and, and it, it, was, it was amazing, of course, to do those screenings. Um, and uh, since two weeks, the film now is in theater in Mexico. Uh, the, um, the two main chains, ch cinema chains, uh, took the movie. Um, and I think it, it, well it was last week, I don't know now, <laughs> but it was in about 40 cinema around Mexico in 11 states, different states. Uh, and the reaction is really good. Uh, and the press also reacted quite good. Um, for the threats, uh, yes, the, 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 uh, the, the, th the thing is that we, we shot exactly two years ago and nothing changed. It's exactly the same. I, I'm, I'm still in contact with most of those people in the film or all of them. Um, most of them saw the movie uh, again last week. We, d we premiered the film in Mexico City and a lot of them came to the premiere. Uh, they talk after afterwards to the public, and 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 that was the most for them. I think the most important thing to say to the people is that nothing changed. Um, so yeah, the the threats are exactly the same, and it's still really dangerous for them. So of course, it might put them or some of them at risk. The film, but but um, you know I, we didn't force them at all. At they, they uh, most of those people told us, I mean, I want to talk, and uh, what can I fear now more than, than what happened already? 
Lady at this end here. It might seem trivial compared with what lots of them are facing, but did you feel under threat yourself? Did you feel at risk? Uh, the, the truth is that uh, almost every day of the shooting, uh, I was afraid. Uh, I, I can't say that I felt threat every day, but but every day yeah, I woke up with uh, something in the stomach. Yeah, yeah, I mean because I knew that we were going in some places that uh, we should not go. Um, places like that ranch in in the chapter uh, five that you saw where they massacred uh, the migrants. I mean, th there's, there's really few journalists, even Mexican journalists, who go there. There's not much, uh, if you check on YouTube, there's, not, there's, there's no images about the, the places. I mean, even after the, the, the killings, um, I think one day uh, the police call in some journalists to, to come and make some images, but that's it. There, the, no investigation was done. Nobody go there because it's really at risk. So, of course, we were afraid uh, during the investigation also because I was... Most of the time I was alone, so it was kind of scary to go to those places. But by meeting those people and to understand their stories, to to be with them, sharing what they experience every day, it's just like make you realize that, well, okay, of course I'm at risk, but it's nothing to do with their reality. Um, but I mean, the, the you cannot be naive neither, say, oh, I'm a Canadian, nothing's gonna happen. There's no, I mean, by doing this film, uh, you need a lot of preparation, of course, to f for making any moves in the country, but also you need a lot of luck. And I think we were really, but th that's what journalists told me. I mean, uh, it's not my words. Uh, and we were obviously uh, lucky because uh, everything went fine. The shooting? Uh, we shoot during the course of a year, about uh, three months, two months, yeah, something like that. But it was a crazy schedule because we travel a lot uh, and, and we interview a lot of people. So it, and, and, and in those situations, as you understand, it, it was kind of a, it was really a, a crazy schedule <laughs> of shooting. So it was a really small crew? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, some s sometimes we were up to seven uh, because there was a lot of um, logistic to, to to prepare, of course. Um, but when we were when we went to those uh, most uh, dangerous places, uh, we were only three, sometimes four, um, but not more because, uh, like in Guerrero State, also in the last chapters, you know, with Mario in the. Uh, the last scene that we done, we were only three, of course, because it, it's it's. We spent a week in his village with him, and uh, it was a, a nightmare every day being there. Uh, by the way, I, I met him last week. He he left now. Is you you understood that in the movie he had um, his wife has to left with the child, but now he left because he received threats a uh, few months ago. So now he's in Mexico City. And so he has to quit his bar, and now he, he it's kind of s funny, but very sad also, but he, he came to uh, a few screenings that we done in Mexico, uh, selling mezcal, a bottle of mezcal to the people, because, <laughs> because, <laughs> but yeah, but he need money, I mean, it just, uh, now he, he left the bar, and, and he left everything, I mean, and he cannot look anymore for his brother, which is, he was, I've seen him in first, this year in February, when we premiered the film in Mexico, and, and I thought he was really, he seems uh, in pretty good shape. And now I think he's, uh, I was really concerned. Um, the fact that he had to let, this is this is this constant violence of Mexico is that it's affecting everybody in the family. This is the probably one of the worst uh, aspect of what is happening in Mexico. It's it's never ending story. I had just. Yeah, his, his mother's day, uh, and of course, uh, that's that's for him. It's pretty hard. I had just a quick question. Um, I was a journalist in Mexico in '97 to '90, and this was all beginning up on the border that you showed so well in the film. Mm. And I was always intrigued and puzzled by the link with the Maculadoras. Like, why was it these girls in particular? Was it? And I noticed 
it's a, a motif all the way through the film. You have these women walking on their own in the streets of Mexico, kind of sending shivers down the yeah. spine. But, but um, what was it? You sort of hinted a little bit, but what was it about the maquiladoras? That was it just that there were more women out and about and earning a bit of money? It could or was there something political behind that? Uh, it's probably both. Uh, it's and again, the thing is that we don't know, and I, I want to be really careful about this, and I would really prefer uh, that. Uh, Mexican journalists answer you, but mm. they're not here tonight. <laughs> um, but that's what they told me. It, it has to do with both, or they are both part of the scenario, uh, meaning that um, that of course those women were really easy target because they were taking bus at, or sorry, they're still taking bus at night. Uh, they travel uh, maybe an hour of, of, of bus and then have to, to walk sometimes half an hour in the middle of nowhere, which is almost a desert. So of course, they are obviously uh, easy targets. Uh, but as Diana Washington, the journalist from El Paso said, there was also maybe some political motives about it. Um, so it's it's... It's hard to say. Y we can say also that something really, I was saying before that um, all those victims uh, had the same faces, but it's really stunning as they're the, it's, it's look almost like if the killers are looking for the same girl. And when you walk in Mexico and you see the faces of those young girls, it's almost the same girls every time. So. Does that mean that they're looking for, like in, in, in Diana Washington made a long investigation about this. And, and of course, we're not talking about all the girls that disappear, but during the course of maybe a, a year or three years, she, she, she found that so many gir girls have the, the, the hair of the, sa the same length of hair, same color, they were dressing the same. Uh, I mean, they had the same age, of course. So it's telling us of a pattern, which is completely, uh, I just wondered, in terms of when you, I don't know what the structure of your film was, who your executive producers or commissioners were, did you face any resistance to making it so broad? Did you have to kind of... From the authorities? Yeah, or, no, no, from your own funders or executive producers to say, like, I yeah. see this film as this broad scope. Did they say, yeah, but the, the cases aren't connected? Did you have to make that argument to them that there were these thematic and... But like if they were afraid of uh, what, what... Making we something so yeah. broad, yeah. Oh, of course. Do they not say, oh, why don't you yeah. just do women yeah. being killed? Why don't you just do this element? Yeah, but they, they, they told me they were afraid. But first they said yes. <laughs> and <laughs> But they said also, uh, of course, we really consider that it's the large scope and everything. But uh, um, it, I was really surprised that uh, it was kind of almost easy to, to, to fund the money for the movie because I was really afraid of this. Yeah. And this is something that a lot of people in Mexico told me also, that you cannot do this because it's impossible to do. And yeah, I, I know it. <laughs> but uh, I, I wanted to do it. Yes. Yeah, just I'm curious to know if there, are, if there is an organization that galvanizes all the relative mothers <coughs> as such as, you know, Madre Salazar and Madre, like to sort of galvanize that movement and, and international support by Amnesty and a lot of organizations that have been, that really sort of helps these disappears in Argentina. Is there something similar in Mexico? Uh, so, so something uh, I've, I, I think it's kind of sad in Mexico is that uh, it seems that almost everybody is fighting uh, in his own side. This is my impression. Uh, same for journalists. It's like there's a lot, I don't know, there's something strange about that's between you and I, uh, us and I. Uh, I just had the feeling that they, I don't know, they just don't talk much to each other and uh, they, I don't know why, I don't know if there's something Mexican about this or it's, uh, and and no, there's, uh, it's it's starting now to, to build, they, they, st they start to build links together and but but we are far from what what happened in Argentina, but also the, I mean it's it's huge. I mean the the, the So they they have so much to do like to 
to look for uh, for bones or for disappearing people that that they, they have almost no time to do nothing else or to organize themselves and they they're completely like uh, lost and 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 yeah they they're lonely. Yeah. I know. <coughs> but there, 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 there is in Mexico some important yeah. voices. But I, I think it's, I don't know, it's so huge maybe that the, it, 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 it's something is missing in uh, in this uh, structure to, they don't have a voice yet to unite all those uh, voices. This is my so feeling. So sadly, I think we're out of time. Um, but thank you all so much thank for you. staying so late. And thank you to Julien for coming to London. Thank you. Thanks, Molly. Thanks, Molly and Kate.